Hello everyone. My name is Lisa Murray and I am the City Historian at the City of Sydney. On behalf of the City's History team, I'd like to acknowledge that we are living, working and creating on country. For me, that's on the lands of the Gadigal and the Wongal people of the Eora Nation. I'd like to pay our respects to Elders past, present and emerging. And I'd also like to acknowledge um, that you would join us today as our audience from probably many different parts of country. Now this tour was originally part of the City of Sydney's Contribution to History Week, which is a statewide festival coordinated by the History Council of New South Wales. It's proved so popular, we've just been doing a number of extra tours and we're really glad you've been able to join us today. I'd now like to welcome my colleague and our speaker for today's tour, Layla Ilmus. Let me introduce you to her. Layla is a historian with the City of Sydney's history team. Her previous exhibition, 1917, The Great Strike, was presented at Carriage Works and received great acclaim. She's authored three books, including Our Island Home, A History of Peat Island, which was shortlisted for the New South Wales Premier's History Awards. She's also written multiple articles for the Dictionary of Sydney. Layla is a member of the Professional Historians Association and before coming to the city, she worked extensively as a heritage consultant in the private sector. Today, Layla will take you on a guided tour of her latest exhibition, Developing Sydney, Capturing Change, 1900 to 1920. Over to you, Layla. So as Lisa mentioned, um, I'm going to give you a guided tour today of an exhibition that I recently curated at Customs House. The exhibition highlights photographs that were commissioned by the City Building Surveyors Department of Council in the first two decades of the 20th century. The exhibition draws from a collection of almost 5,000 photographs and associated glass plate negatives that document condemned buildings across the city. This collection is known as the Demolition Books. To give a bit of context about why we have these photographs, Council had the power to demolish dangerous and insanitary buildings since 1879. These buildings received a condemnation notice which required owners to repair or demolish. In 1900, the City Building Surveyors Department began hiring professional photographers to document what they called these old insanitary and ruinous buildings. This was when they were condemned and usually before they were demolished. These photographs were intended as a form of evidence should there be any dispute, but of course they were also to record what was about to be lost. So now I'm going to show you around the exhibition. And first things first, I'm going to share my screen with you. And this means that you can see what I can see as I take you around. The URL for this virtual tour, if you want to write it down, and we'll, we will put it on a slide later in the uh, presentation, it's Sydney Customs House, all one word, dot com dot au forward slash visit forward slash exhibitions dash events. The reason that we're doing the virtual tour is because we can't visit Customs House at the moment. It's closed to the public. This means that you can't see the exhibition in person. So this virtual tour is the next best thing. We installed the exhibition in early March 2020, but then the building closed a week or so later. Luckily, we were able to film the exhibition with a 3D camera and present it online via the Customs House website. So in the virtual tour today, you're going to be able to experience how uh, the physical exhibition is laid out in Customs House. And I'll just scroll down here so you can see. It's over two levels of Customs House. So we've got level one, and then down here, we've got level two. Um, I'm gonna show you how the virtual tools work and how to navigate through the space. I'm also going to share my, um, some of my favorite images. And at the end, I'll explain how you can find and explore more resources. So to get into the exhibition, I have actually cheekily gone in here before, so I'll have to sh show you through this so you can just see. So this is going into the second level, which I will come back to. But to get into the exhibition, you just click on this um, arrow here and then that takes you into the exhibition. But I'm just gonna jump in here 
And what I'll do here is go to full screen. That's the best way to um, see the tour. Um, I will say just bear with me as I go through the exhibition because I'm actually doing this live and I will just jump over here to where I want it to start. A few navigation tips as well before I get going. Um, the virtual tour is best viewed on a large screen, so we recommend a desktop computer or a laptop. Um, and we also recommend that you use Chrome as your browser. This is for the tour, but also um, if you're linking through to our archives catalogue, that is the best browser to view the catalogue on. Um, you can use your mouse. This is, I've just got this little cursor here. This is your mouse here. Um, you can use your mouse arrow keys or in fact your trackpad to move through the space. Um, and you can follow the hotspots on the floor. So you can see throughout the, the floor, there's these little dots here that look very similar to the mouse symbol, but they're hotspots. That's actually where the exhibition was filmed from. Um, so if you follow those around the space, then you can navigate through the exhibition. Uh, with your mouse here, you can drag it to look left and right. And you can also go up and down. And then if you've got a scroll on your mouse, you can actually use that to scroll in. And I'll just go in like that and then out again. So we've got three display cases in front of us, but actually I wanna start over here and look at the introductory panel for the exhibition. So this panel here gives you historical context and background to the exhibition. Um, which I'm going to just quickly summarise. So just suffice it to say, Sydney's built landscape was rapidly urbanising in the early 20th century and many old buildings were swept away in piecemeal demolitions and neighbourhood resumptions. The council used photography to document this profound transformation. So if you want to read the text on this introduction panel, you need to click on this dot at the top here, the circular dot or um, tag. And then you have to, in this particular panel, uh, panels without images in particular, you need to scroll through in order to read the text on the panel. And so what you see there actually replicates what's on the panel there. Now I want to draw your attention to these um, six images here against the sandstone wall. These images were chosen because they were taken in the same year, in around 1901 and probably by the same photographer. The photographer's name was Charles Kent and he was council's photographer from 1901 through until 1907. So to look at the images, to make them bigger and to also read the text, um, you just click on that dot on the corner again and then hover that mouse and it opens. If you wanna see it in a larger size, you just see there's this little, um, I guess a little thing with a, with a cross in the middle, you just click on that and then you get to see the image in full size, it pops up. Um, if you don't wanna read the caption, you don't have to, you can actually just click this little arrow here at the top and then put it down. But if you do wanna read the caption, we've got the title of the image, this image we don't know where it is, we've got the date. Um, usually the title pertains to the location or the type of building that it was. Um, we've got the caption here, which is the same caption in the uh, exhibition panel, and we've got the reference number. But in this, one of the benefits of having a virtual exhibition is that we can actually link through to the catalogue. So I'm going to just do that now. So when we're in this, um, when we're in the catalogue, you can see the image in more detail. Um, and you can actually enlarge the image. You can take it up to around 200%. So there's a little magnifying glass there at the side. And so you can zoom right in to see the detail. And you can see this man um, with his trousers rolled up sitting on a sewing table. There's a stag horn next to the door, possibly his home. There's a spaniel dog sitting in the distance and there's all this clothes hanging on the line. I'll just zoom it down a bit more so you can see the detail. It's a very domestic scene, obviously a scene somebody's been doing washing. But then above we've got this um, looming chimney. So that's sort of in the heart of industry really. The other thing you can do when you're um, in the catalogue, if you like this image, you can actually download it to high resolution 
or there's also a reference copy. So you can see here, if you just click on that there, that's the original, it's a TIFF file, it's quite large um, uh, resolution. And then you could also uh, download the JPEG if you so wish. So now I'm just gonna go back into the exhibition. So to do that, I'm just gonna to toggle back to the original um, panel where I was, and I will have to go back into full screen. So I'll click that and there we are. So as I'm taking you through this exhibition, I'm going to be sharing some of my favourite images with you. Um, and I'll just come along here. Just click on this one so you can see. This is a backyard in Surrey Hills. It's always a bit of a difficult choice to choose favourite images, and I must admit they do change from week to week, depending on what I see. Um, but this is a backyard in Surrey Hills, as I mentioned. And if you zoom in closely, you can see this little animal sitting there. So kangaroo, possibly a wallaby, sharing the yard space with this unusual little girl. Um, and there's this cage, this sort of flimsy chicken wire cage structure, possibly somewhere where it was um, being kept. So I'm going to click off that. Now I'm going to take you through the display cases. I'm going to start. I'll just turn around here so you can see where I am. I'm going to start with this one, this green one here. So to do that, I'm going to take you around the front to start with. Uh, one thing I'll just say uh, before I get into all the cabinets is that they were originally photographed from the side. So as we're going through, you'll find that the, um, the angle that you view them on is quite sort of oblique or from an angle. Um, so just have to persist with that. Um, I find that if you actually use the scroll function on your mouse, you can actually get a good sense overall of what's in those particular cabinets. So the first display cabinet gives a background to the professional photographers that were employed by the council. Um, we're also in this cabinet looking at the process for producing the glass plate negatives. This was a technique that was used um, in what was actually called a dry plate. Um, and it was a technique that was came from the 19th century and it was in use until uh, the first few decades of the 20th century. But also how the negatives have been preserved and of course made accessible in more recent times by the city archives. So obviously through the, um, the catalogues that you saw before, but also the process of scanning these glass plate negatives to a different format. So as we're looking at this cabinet, I just wanted to draw your attention to two objects. So to do that, I'm just going to use my scroll on my mouse so you can zoom in. And the two things that I want to draw your attention is the one is the box. There's a timber box in front of us here. And I'll just click on the tag for that one. Um, the photographers didn't keep, well, particularly for this, um, for this part of the council, they didn't keep their glass plate negatives, but instead they handed them over to the council for safekeeping. Excuse me. Um, these were very fragile glass plates um, and they were, I guess, to protect them, they were stored in these timber boxes, um, just like this one. Whoops, sorry, I'm just going. It's one of the dangers of the mouse. Look in there. Um, they were most likely built by council staff. They're actually, I think they're cedar. Um, they were probably built by staff. I know the shelving where they were housed was definitely built by the staff. Um, and then we've also got um, next to this one, we've got a reproduction glass plate negative, which I'll click on here. Um, and this image that we're looking at here is of a, um, a place that was known as Fowler's Tip in Camperdown. And this photograph was taken in 1922. And in fact, both the box and the negative were um, associated with the works that were done in uh, 1922 by the council to document an outbreak of bubonic plague. The photographer for this, um, for this series of images was Milton Kent. Um, they're quite, I mean, it's, it's kind of interesting because when you see the writing on the boxes, you don't always know what it's for. And unfortunately you can't see that because it's covered with a dot, but you know. If you see it in, you get to see it in person, you'll be able to, to appreciate what it was trying to document. Um, I'm going to take you now around to the other side of the cabinet. So to do that, I'm just going to go across here and I'm going to go to this hotspot on the other side and then swivel around. Okay. 
Okay. So in this side of the cabinet, there are bi biographies of the three photographers who were employed by the council between 1900 and 1920. There were other photographers that were employed by the council in this period, but these particular photographers did exclusive work for the city building surveyors department to document the condemned and demolished buildings. And I'm just going to use my scroll and my mouse again so you can actually see a bit more detail of how the um, panels look. So the panel at the far right here um, gives you some information about Charles Kemp, who I mentioned earlier. Uh, in his professional practice, he specialised in portraiture. Uh, and you can see as you go around the exhibition, uh, the way that he documented people in the streets and especially children. And actually, if you, there's a little still from a video there, you can see some of his work of children there. Uh, the next panel along uh, looks into the work of Milton Kent. And this is actually Charles Kent's eldest son. And he worked for council from around 1915 through until the 1940s. So Milton Kent went on to have a highly su successful commercial photography business, but he was particularly renowned for his aerial photography. And the third photographer along was a man named Thomas David Cleary. And he was more known as a press photographer. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a photograph of him um, in this exhibition. Um, and he is a little bit elusive, but um, I did find that he did um, some work for a newspaper that was in Melbourne called The Australasian. But, you know, he was a commercial photographer, so he also was council's photographer from 1908 through until around 1911, but most likely a little bit longer. Uh, I don't know if you noticed there that those panels didn't expand, similar to when we don't have an image that goes with the particular panel, then you actually have to scroll through to read the text. So this particular thing here, this is a video that we made with Paul Patterson. He's a member of our staff and he's the inheritor in some ways of the tradition of those three photographers. So he's been photographing changes to the city, new things that are being built uh, over the last you know, 10 or so years. But he's also during this time been painstakingly scanning the glass plate negatives to very high resolution. And I think it's safe to say that we wouldn't have this exhibition without him because he's done such a, a beautiful job on scanning the negatives. Um, I would say um, come back and have a look at that video. It's really nice. If you, um, if you can't listen to the audio, it's actually got captions underneath it as well. So this uh, cabinet here in the middle, just zoom out a bit. This middle cabinet showcases photographs that were taken in two areas of Sydney that were radically transformed at the turn of the 20th century. So we're looking at here um, eight landscape photographs of buildings along Kent Street, um, which were taken in around 1901. And I'm just going to click through them as I'm talking here so you can have a look. This waterfront near area near Darling Harbour was radically transformed, um, reshaped, sorry, following the outbreak of bubonic plague in 1901, sorry, in 1900. Many of the buildings that you see here uh, were domestic. Sorry, I'm sort of distracted and I'm trying to open them up for you so you can get a good look at everything. Um, but there was pressure for land here because it was so close to the harbour and the maritime trade. Many of these buildings were soon replaced with warehouses and factories. So this one is, is a great photo, it's a place called Zet Spa and it was on the corner of Gas Lane. And this was um, a business that was run by people out in the country, I think it was near Bathurst somewhere, um, and they supplied and bottled uh, their spa water for Sydney ciders in the heart of the Millers Point area. So I'm going to jump you around to the other side of the cabinet. Um, and we're looking here at, this, at um, the site of today's central station. And this is an area that covers 24 hectares. So at the turn of the century in 1900, um, 
this half of this site was given over to a cemetery. Um, this was known as Sand Hills or the Devonshire Street Cemetery. But the other half of this site contained an array of quite substantial institutional buildings. And in the course of curating this exhibition, I realised that we had around 13 negatives of these buildings, which ended up all being cleared away to make way for Central Station. So these included the, um, the police barracks, the, what they're known as the Pelmore Police Barracks, which I'd like to just quickly show you here. The great photos shows the building actually partway through demolition, quite a substantial building and similar in some ways to the Hyde Park Barracks in terms of its style. It was built in the 1840s or 50s. Um, and then the Benevolent Asylum, which I'll just open up for you here. Uh, this was a building that was um, near Pitt Street, sort of near where Eddy Avenue is today. You can see this little boy standing here with a cape and a cap, a very well-dressed young boy. And we speculate that this was Milton, uh, sorry, Charles Kent's son. We don't know if it's Milton. It looks a little bit too young to be Milton, the eldest son, but it's very likely that it was um, the second eldest son called Stanley. Um, these buildings, um, by the time Central Station was built and completed in, sorry, in 1906, um, these buildings were long forgotten, really. So the third cabinet along, and I will just click on some of the images here so you can see something different while I'm going through. So this third cabinet explores um, the profound, sorry, explores how this profound change to the city um, was interpreted and understood at the time. I'll just go back here. Whoops, sorry. Not sure where I started. Sorry if I make you a bit seasick. What I'll actually do is just scroll in so you can have a look. So what we've got here in this covenant are some etchings. These are etchings that were gifted to the council in 1937 by um, Sydney Ewer Smith. Um, and he was one of the people that was associated with the movement to um, record and preserve what was called Old Sydney. And um, this desire to commemorate and record the past really uh, merged in some ways with Council's own moves to document condemned buildings with photographs before they were demolished. And I think it's really interesting to contrast the black and white photographs with a work like this. Um, or works like this that were prepared by Sydney Ewer Smith. Um, at the moment, I'll just go back. Um, these are reproductions that we have on display and because they're etchings, I'm able to share with you um, some of the copies that are held at the State Library of New South Wales. This picture's of Scott's Church. There is a replacement there now. Um, and we are hoping to actually put the um, copies that we have of these um, of these etchings up onto the archives catalog um, in the next little while or so. So it'd be wonderful to be able to then link through to our own archive so you can see those. I'm just going to um, take you round to the other side of this cabinet and I'm going to go to the hotspot there and then turn you around. So in this side, I just wanted to um, really highlight some of the photos from our collection that show buildings that were regarded at the time as landmarks of historical interest. Um, so there was this sense at the time that there were important buildings that should be saved. Some of them were and some of them weren't. So the buildings I just wanted to share with you today is this one here. This is Glover's Cottage on Kent Street. Um, if you know the Millers Point area at all, um, you might notice this building. I've just got it my cursor here. That's actually, that building still survives. It is still known as Glover's Cottages. This larger, so quite dominant building on the rock platform, that doesn't survive. Um, nonetheless, it is interesting how some buildings sort of have been maintained over time. The other building that I just wanted to show you is, oh, it's actually more of a lane lay, really, with buildings surrounding it. It's Trinity Avenue, and this does survive in some form as well. 
um, although um, this whole, I guess, skyline would be dominated today by the Sydney Harbour Bridge. And I'll just close that again. And I'll scroll in here so you can have a look at the bottom of the display case. Um, these are models of buildings that were built across the city between 1788 and 2020. Um, so they, that's from 1788 up until the present day, if you go along this way. Grouped together, they're intended to show the changing scale and shape of Sydney's skyline in this period. The models were crafted by Richard Bradish, who's been a model maker at the city for over 30 years. Um, and at the bottom of the display case, there's a little red little dot there. Um, and you can actually watch a video with him. And we made this a couple of years ago for an exhibition about the, um, the anniversary of the council. So again, encourage you to go back and, and watch that if you're so inclined. So if we go here, you can see there's some couches here and there is a television. And so to, for this exhibition, there's so many images to choose from. So what we really wanted to do was find another way that we could share them with audiences. So we did make two videos. So we've got this video here, uh, which is about, we, it's quite interesting because the council photographers demolished the old buildings that were being demolished, but then they also did construction photos, which I'll show you in a moment. But this is the uh, building, so almost, I think they were photographed, this building during construction was photographed every two weeks or so. And so it has, a, in some senses, it's like a time lapse, although not quite accurate in that, it, because it's taken from different angles. Nonetheless, you get this sense of the changing city. Um, this other video here, um, that shows you, um, there's a selection of images, which we've, um, zoomed in and out of um, and so you can see different elements as you're going through uh, the video. So now I'm going to move across the floor um, and to, to continue the tour. So I'm just going to scroll in here and I think you can see if your eyesight's any good. There's this dot here and I'm going to actually to get to the other side I'm just going to put my mouse here and I'm just going to hopefully jump across the floor. So we've, on this side of the exhibition, we've got seven photographs that show buildings and infrastructure that were designed and built by the council in this early period. We've got an introduction panel here, and that gives you, again, the history and the context of why these photographs were selected. Again, you, you do need to scroll through to read um, that text. Um, but I just wanted to single out a few photographs for you to look at today. Um, we've got this one here, which is the Domain Baths. Um, this was shortly after it was constructed. This is now the ABC Pool, Andrew Boy Charlton Pool. And this photograph here, which is the Paddy's Markets, but was built as a fruit and vegetable market. This photograph was taken by Milton Kent um, in 1920. And I think it's quite an extraordinary photograph, uh, not only the skill of the photographer and the vantage point that he took the photograph from, but just the way that the city is, you know, a hundred years later is so completely different. There's not one single tall building on that um, horizon there. I'll just click that off. Now I'm going to take you to the second floor. And I gave you a little hint about how to get there before. So there's two ways that you can get there. You can go back, you can exit the full screen and then you can actually go back to the main page and into the second level here. But there's actually another way you can do it within the exhibition. Ahead of you, you can see this little dot, a circular dot on the staircase and it says go to exhibition upstairs and just click here. So there's 26 photographs on this level and it was really hard to choose which images to display here. Um, there are a lot to choose from, as I mentioned. I mean, there are 5,000 in the collection, but really wanted to go with the ones that were scanned to high resolution. 
So the decision about what to display on this level really came down to how the images fit, fitted together, so aesthetically, um, but also the stories that they tell us about the city. The photographs on this level are in chronological order, so you can move around the space in a clockwise direction, or you can dip in and out um, as you choose. And so as we're going around this level, I just wanted to share with you some of my favourite images. So the first one I'm going to do is actually the first one along here. Just click on that, wait for it to upload. This, uh, this particular photo was taken on George Street near the corner of Market Street in around 1901. It's very close to um, where Myers is now, if, if there are any Sydney siders in the audience. If you look really closely, um, you can see this Fagan type figure standing near the doorway of the pub. And there are some cage birds which are on the roadway here. So there's a cockatoo and actually sitting in the cage next to him is a magpie. So now I'm gonna move through the space and I'm gonna do this by following the hotspots on the floor. Just a reminder, this is my mouse that I'm circling here. And that other sort of paler circle is actually a hot spot. So the next image I want to show you, it's, it's quite a dramatic image and it was also taken in 1901. It shows the aftermath of a very destructive fire that burnt down Anthony Horton's department store in the Haymarket near Central. So this photograph shows the precarious building facade that remained on George Street. This had to be taken down for public safety. So for several days after the fire, there were, there were no trams running along this section um, of George Street. So uh, to get the wall down, they did actually put dynamite into it, but it was a very strong wall um, and it was quite resistant to, uh, to collapse. Um, and the way that they got it down in the end was actually by wrapping a steel rope around it and then um, attaching that rope to um, some tram engines, two of them, and then the trams sort of moved down George Street and then pulled the wall down. Um, and I don't know if you can see here, there's these ladders and different infrastructure going up onto that building, but then there's a row of men all standing there, which is quite, brave or foolhardy, I'm not quite sure which. Um, you can see if you go into the, um, to look at the image in detail, you can see they're all just wearing, you know, normal clothes and then a, a sort of fireman's helmet. So it's just as well the wall was resistant to collapse. So to move along, I'm actually going to go use my mouse to zoom in a bit and then click on this image here. So this photograph I want to share with you now, this epitomises what I was saying about Charles Kent's um, propensity to capture children in his photographs. So this building that you're looking at here is Christchurch St Lawrence School and the photo was taken in around 1902. Um, this perfectly proportioned building was designed by uh, Edmund Blackett, but it was demolished to make way for the approaches to Central Station. So now I'm going to move through the space and just follow again the hot spots on the floor and I'm going to jump to the other side of this doorway. And click on this image here. So these buildings, um, interestingly enough, are still standing. They're at 730 to 736 George Street. They're actually on George Street in front of the Capitol Theatre. If you look closely at this photograph, you can see that there's a man standing on the awning holding up a very large ruler. This photograph was taken in around 1912. We're not quite sure why. Um, I speculate it's possibly something to do with um, the works to maybe change the building facades, but there is a record that also relates to the attachment of a um, tram cable to this particular building in around that same period. Um, if you see here at the top here, you can see this thing that says City Buildings and it's got um, Benjamin Palmer, Mayor, 1870, I think 1876, I believe. Um, so this was an early 
I guess, public private partnership. So the buildings were constructed by a private builder um, on council land. But the building uh, in question here, you can see Haymarket Seed Warehouse at the top of the building there. And it says trees, plants and bulbs. Um, so this building was, um, was rented by Hortons and they had an exclusive agreement to market Kentia Palms, um, seeds, plants and ferns that were imported from Lord Howe Island. So it's interesting as you go through like the building, the building photographs are not just about a building, you get this sense of Sydney's social history. So this is one of my favourite images. Just click on that there so you can have a look. Again, this is mainly due to the kids. Uh, but then there's this other detail. There's a woman, I don't know if you can see here, she's holding a child looking over the balcony, another child's looking out perhaps at the photographer. They, there's a little shop there at number 76. And then on the other side, there's actually a second hand dealer. Um, dealer in secondhand clothes. This photograph was taken on Stanley Street in East Sydney in around 1912. I'm just going to take you up to the end here. This is the last image I'm going to share with you today. It's very topical, which you'll see when we go in there. Um, this photograph was taken in February 1919 on the corner of Hunter and O'Connell Streets. You can see here um, there are people wearing masks. So this photograph was taken during the Spanish flu pandemic. Um, and the photographer was documenting a building that was about to be torn down, but he captured something else. And in some senses, this is, um, I guess, one of the guiding themes of the exhibition. You know, it's a you know, we have a collection of photographs which document buildings that are you know, condemned and demolished, but really we've been able to capture this um, social history of Sydney. So now I'm at the end of the tour. So thanks for joining me on this uh, part of the tour. And now I wanted to show you around the archives and history resources catalogue. So to do that, I'm gonna ex exit um, the full screen here. Um, and then toggle to a new tab. So first things first, um, you can actually go to find sort of more information on here about the photographs that were used in the exhibition. So if you go to the top of the page, um, you can see this thing, it says exhibition content and there's a little list and it just says developing Sydney. So if you click on that, what you get there is you get have these tiles and um, the reason this collection is called the demolition books is that we have glass plate negatives, but we also have um, contact prints that were made from the glass plate negatives, which have been pasted into these books, which are just quite extraordinary. And I really do encourage you to come back. It's a bit of a work in progress. There are, I think, almost 50 books in our collection. So we've got five of them up. So um, I'm so looking forward to seeing them all being um, scanned. Um, but the one thing I wanted to share with you is actually this page here, which is the images that were all used in the exhibition. Um, there are four pages of them. And so you can scroll through um, the pages and you get these tiles. If you're interested in a particular image, you can actually just click on that there. We'll go this one. This is the um, one we we're just looking at. Um, Again, you can just use that little tile, little um, magnifying glass to scroll in and out. You can download the image. You can suggest an edit if you wish. You can also, um, if you want to use it for publication, you can cite the item there. Um, so one of the best things about curating this exhibition was researching and writing up the captions and in some cases uh, identifying when and where a photograph was taken. So to do this, I used a range of tools and resources. Most of them are available here on the um, new catalogue. So the ones that I found most useful 
were the SANS post office directory. And I'm just going to click through there so you can see what the interface is like. Um, you can search here within the collection or you can actually download um, a year and actually scroll through that. They're all scanned to OCR, which is optical character recognition. So you can actually, when you download it, you can actually search through and there's a bit of a guide here about how to search directories. The other thing that was um, immensely useful were this, these resources known as the assessment books. Um, so this was a, uh, I guess a thing that was created by the council to calculate rates, but has also become this um, historical tool. We're still, um, it's a bit of a work in progress to get the assessment books onto the catalogue, um, but you can still, if you're interested, you can still search for them on this page. And then of course, maps. Um, so we've got this uh, resource called the Historical Atlas of Sydney, and you can see we've got these tiles here that tell you which maps we've got, and then you can actually go and have a look at them. Uh, the one that I found particularly useful for researching this exhibition were the Dove's plans from 1880. I know, you know, 20 years before um, 1900, when the photographs started being taken, but Sydney was very little um, changed in these in the late 19th century. So they have been um, very useful. Um, to go in and have a look at them, you just click on the tile, it takes you to a page and then you can actually just zoom in here and then download um, a map from there and go from there. So you can look at it on this page, you can also download it as a PDF and that means you can zoom into quite um, a lot of detail. You can also do really basic searches. So you can do a search up here, which um, say for the, if you know a building owner, you can search there, or you can also search by the address, the street address of the building you're interested in. But of course the photographs themselves, now that they're scanned at high resolution, provide a lot of clues for the history detective, especially when you zoom into the details. So I encourage you to explore both the virtual exhibition and also the catalogue in your own time and to see what you can find. So now I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And um, I think we've got a bit of time to have a bit of discussion from here. Thanks so much, Layla. Uh, yes, we will be uh, in a moment having a bit of discussion but I'm just going to share my screen and put those addresses up there for you about how to find out more. So to visit the virtual exhibition and explore more in your own time and have a look at some of the videos that Layla's pointed out, go to sydneycustomshouse.com.au forward slash visit forward slash exhibitions and dash events. And to really drill down and zoom into all those extraordinary images, go to the City Archives catalogue, which is archives.cityofsydney.nsw.gov.au and go to the exhibition content on the top left and choose Developing Sydney. We of course welcome your feedback and we have just put up on the screen a QR code. If you'd like to provide feedback, grab your smartphones and you can tell us what you thought of this tour. We'll also be circulating this to people who've joined us live today. Um, and so you, we'll share a link with you after this event.